All right, so get ready because today we are taking a deep dive into something that might make you shiver. Oh, is it something scary? Haha, uh -huh. well, maybe a little. We're diving into cold water immersion. You know, ice baths and cold showers and stuff. Ah, uh, I see. Those are definitely getting a lot of attention lately. They are. You actually sent in this Psychology Today article about it, about how cold water immersion could be good for your mood and even your brain. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was really interested to see what you guys would find out about it. Well, like I say, it's pretty fascinating stuff. I mean, you don't usually think about cold water making you feel good, right? Definitely not the first thing that comes to mind. But, you know, before we even get to the sciencey stuff, I was really surprised to learn that cold water immersion isn't some new fad. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently the ancient Egyptians were into it like way back in 3000 BC. Wow, so it's got some serious history behind it. It does. And the article even mentions the Coney Island Polar Bear Club. You know those folks who do those crazy ocean swims in the winter? Yeah, I've seen pictures. Looks intense. Oh, it is. But they've been doing it every winter since 1903. So clearly, something about cold water keeps people coming back for more. I guess so. So what does the science actually say about all of this? Well, the article mentions that people who regularly swim in cold water say it has all kinds of benefits. Like what? Like they say it helps with inflammation, that it can speed up your metabolism, and even help you sleep better. Hmm, interesting. And it's not just physical stuff, right? Right. They even say it can boost your libido. Whoa, okay. I mean, some of that might sound a little too good to be true, right? Yeah, I mean, some of those claims probably need more research. But there's definitely a lot of people saying they feel amazing after a cold plunge. So what about the actual studies? What have they found? Okay, so there's this one from 2025 that the article highlights, where they had people immerse themselves in 10 degrees Celsius water, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit, three times a week. Brr, that's cold. I know, right? And they only did it for 10 minutes each time. Mm. But the results were really something. They found that it actually helped their brains work faster like they were better at processing information and thinking flexibly. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Right. And their sleep improved, too. Plus, they said they felt less worried in general. Huh. I wonder if the cold just shocks all the worry out of you. Uh-huh. Maybe. Yeah. But it's not just that one study. There are others, too. Oh, yeah. Like what? Well, one study found that even just a quick 20-minute swim in cold ocean water really helped lower people's negative emotions, you know, like tension and anger and stuff. So like a mood reset button. Kind of. Yeah. And another study showed that people actually felt more alert, inspired, and even proud after taking a cold bath for just five minutes. Wait, proud from a cold bath? I know it sounds weird, right? I wouldn't have connected those two things either. Hmm. What do you think is going on there? Well, the article focuses a lot on cortisol, you know, that stress hmm. hormone. Right, right, cortisol. So... I actually don't know a ton about cortisol. Could you maybe give us a quick refresher on what it is and why it's important? Sure. So basically, cortisol is this hormone our bodies release when we're stressed. It's actually super important because it helps us deal with tough situations. The thing is, when we have too much cortisol or it's being released all the time, it can start to really mess with us. In what way? Well, it can make us feel moody and anxious, mess with our sleep, and even make it harder to manage our weight. Like, imagine your body's alarm system going off constantly. It's going to wear you down. Yeah, that makes sense. So you'd think jumping into ice-cold water would send your cortisol levels skyrocketing. Right. You would think that, wouldn't you? Totally. But is that what actually happens? It's actually kind of surprising. What do you mean? Well, studies have actually shown that cortisol levels don't really spike during the cold immersion itself. Huh. So the initial shock doesn't send your body into panic mode. It doesn't seem to. It's actually in the hours after the cold exposure that researchers see a big dip in cortisol levels. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So it's not just about the cold itself, but how our bodies react to it over time. Exactly. So it's not the immediate shock, but this like longer term response. Yeah. It's like our bodies are figuring out how to deal with that cold stress and then they kind of chill out, literally. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, yeah, literally. Yeah. So, how long do those good vibes last? Yeah. You know, after you get out of the cold water. That's what researchers are trying to figure out, you know, how long those mood boosting effects hang around. Oh, I see. Yeah. Some studies are saying it could be for a few hours at least, while others are suggesting that if you do it regularly, you might get some long term benefits too. So, it's like training your body to handle stress better over time. Exactly. It's almost like your system learns to be more resilient. Fascinating. So, it's not just about like, toughing up physically it's about mental resilience too yeah exactly and there's another interesting piece to this puzzle oh what's that 
It's not just cortisol that's involved in this whole cold water response, you know. There are other neurotransmitters at play, too. Ah, like dopamine and norepinephrine, those brain chemicals that make us feel good and motivated and focused. Yeah, those are the ones. Research suggests that cold exposure can actually trigger the release of those neurotransmitters. So it's like a natural mood booster and a brain power boost all in one. Yeah, kind of like that. It explains why some people feel so alert and energized, even euphoric after a cold plunge. Wow, so there's this whole cascade of positive effects happening in our brains when we expose ourselves to cold. It really is remarkable. It makes you wonder, like, is there some evolutionary reason why our bodies do this? Why would we have evolved to respond to cold in this way? That's a great question, and it makes a lot of sense when you think about our ancestors, you know? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, back in the day, those who could handle the cold and still think straight would have had a better chance of survival, right? Yeah, makes sense. So maybe we're tapping into some ancient survival mechanism when we do these cold water immersions. Maybe we are. And that opens up all sorts of questions about how we can use those ancient mechanisms to improve our lives today. Okay, so before we all jump into the nearest ice bath, we should probably talk about safety. Oh, absolutely. Safety is super important, especially when you're dealing with cold water. The article mentioned some risks, right? Yeah, like hypothermia is a real danger, especially in open water. Right, so it's definitely not something to take lightly. No, not at all. You should never swim alone in cold water and always make sure someone knows where you are and when you're supposed to be back. That's good advice. And it's important to remember that everyone's body is different. Totally. What feels invigorating to one person might be dangerous for someone else. So it's really about listening to your body and knowing your limits. Exactly. If you have any health issues, especially with your heart or circulation, talk to your doctor before trying anything too extreme. That's a good point. Yeah, it's better to be safe than sorry. And even if you're healthy, it's always best to start slowly, right? Like maybe don't jump straight into a freezing lake. Uh-huh, right. Maybe try ending your shower with a burst of cold water first. Yeah, that sounds like a good way to ease into it. It is. You can gradually increase your exposure over time. The key is to listen to your body and not push yourself too hard too fast. It's all about finding what works for you. Exactly. Cold water immersion should be about enhancing your well-being, not putting yourself at risk. This has been super interesting. I have to admit I'm kind of tempted to try some cold water immersion now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe those cold showers I mentioned. Maybe. We'll see. All right, well, I think it's time to wrap up our deep dive into cold water immersion. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground. We have. Ugh. From ancient Egypt all the way to modern science. It's amazing to see how this practice has stood the test of time. It is. So let's do a quick recap of what we learned, you know, just to tie it all together. Sounds good. Okay, so we started by talking about how cold water immersion has been around for ages. Yeah. Right? like those ancient Egyptians and the Coney Island Polar Bear Club folks. Yeah, it's not just some trendy new thing. Right. And then we talk about all the potential benefits, like for your mood and brain power, and even for managing stress. It seems like something so simple could have such a powerful effect. I know. And we dug into how it might all work, like the role of cortisol and those other neurotransmitters. Right, like dopamine and norepinephrine. They're like, the brain's feel good, chemicals. Exactly. And... Even though you'd think jumping into cold water would make your stress levels go crazy, it seems like the opposite happens. Yeah. It's like your body learns to chill out over time. Yeah. And we even talked about how all this could be tied to evolution. You know, like how our ancestors had to deal with cold to survive. And maybe we're still carrying those ancient adaptations within us. Yeah. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. It really is. It makes you wonder, you know, could something as simple as cold water immersion be a key to better well-being in our modern world? That's a great question. I right. mean, the, the research definitely suggests there's something powerful going on here. And even if you're not ready to take the full plunge into an ice bath, there are other ways to explore the benefits of cold. Yeah, like ending your shower with a burst of cold water. Right, right. exactly. Start small, see how you feel, and maybe you'll be surprised at what a little bit of cold can do. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive into cold water immersion. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me.